hello everybody. Um, bienvenue and welcome to this hybrid uh, session today. Really, really happy to be joining you from Ottawa, um, where we have um, the traditional and ceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. Um, in this session today, we will be um, basically unpacking the data strategy for the federal public service with Canada's own chief data officer, Mr. Stephen Birds. So in this Ask Me Anything session, we will learn about the Government of Canada's progress towards its future vision, where greater public value is drawn from GC open data and data enables better outcomes for the people of Canada. The Government of Canada has a long-standing relationship with the Canada Open Data Society as a partner in the advocacy for the public value of open data. Throughout this session, please feel free to add your questions and comments to the chat. We will monitor and address these as we go. And joining me for this compelling conversation is our own Chief of Canada, Chief Data Officer of Canada, and Assistant Deputy Minister for Data and Digital Policy, Mr. Stephen Bird. Really happy to be with you here, Stephen. Always a pleasure, Emma. It's great to see you. So we will um, we will really start diving into um, so many questions, and um, the first one is really um, so, Stephen. Um, what exactly is this 2023 20, 2026 20, data strategy for the public service? Um, and I, I just wanted you to dig a little deep, deeper into uh, the top priorities for for your office. You know. As you talk about renewing the, you, you talked about renewing the uh, the Government of Canada data strategy. Can you tell us why this was needed and what this whole renewal is about? Sure. So, uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, inviting us to be here today. Um, I'm going to say two things as we get rolling here uh, before I get into uh, answering Yuma's question. One is, in about five minutes, the lights are going to go out. Uh, here in my building, it'll be 6 p.m. and we're very energy efficient. So I have alternative lighting, but if it gets all funky, uh, that's what's going on. And I might, you might see me playing with some stuff here. Um, second thing is just to say, uh, you've got me at the end of a very long day, at the end of a very long week uh, in a November that has just been flying by. So God knows what I'm going to say here. Uh, so uh, please forgive me for any uh, slip ups or uh, profanities that may uh, that may come out as we go. But very interested to uh, to get all your questions. So look, uh, Eamon, in response to, to your question, um, you know, you've been around these files uh, for, uh, for a while, as have I. Uh, we launched a great uh, uh, data strategy back in, in 2018 that really got, uh, got the town going um, and got federal departments and agencies um, naming chief data officers, developing data strategies, thinking about data and how they were using it in a more explicit way within their, uh, their various operations. Uh, but by the time we stood up the data office here at Treasury Board Secretariat, a lot of the energy out of that had dissipated. Uh, people were still doing the work, uh, but it had disappeared a bit below the wave tops. And there was a sense, I think, in the data community that we had, uh, we were kind of reaching the end of the momentum that we had built up through that time. And there was a need to re-energize, particularly for some of those tough interdepartmental things um, that uh, no single department can do on their own. So when I came in here, my mandate from the uh, the Chief Information Officer here at Treasury Board Secretariat was to uh, refresh that strategy and try to bring new energy to it. So what we did uh, over the course of that first year was bring together uh, departments and agencies in a number of consultations. Uh, we went on the road. We talked to uh, stakeholders uh, and, and groups from, uh, from across Canada in terms of what it is we wanted to do here. And the goal was really to drive a piece of work that would um, re-energize the community, but also deliver some tangible outcomes, either in the immediate or things that would lay the foundations for longer term uh, projects that we knew we wanted to do. So the reason we put the dates on this 2023 to 2026 was to build in an expiry date to be able to measure the work we we're going to do under the uh, the four mission areas of the strategy and see where we did well see where we fell short and actually be able to with purpose re-energize that again at the end of a three-year period uh, based on the progress we had made so for me the key the strategy um is about half and half of sort of statements of 
of uh, intent and uh, vision and principles in terms of where it was you want to go. And the other half built along four, uh, four mission areas, which to me is really the heart of the documents. Those are data by design, data for decision making, uh, enabling data-driven services, and then empowering the public service, which is really about talent, tools, and, uh, and, and data literacy. So each one of those has a lot of specific actions underneath it, and we're, the goal is really to drive the work over three years, measure how we're performing in um, quarterly internal exercises and annual public-facing exercises, uh, and then take stock and, uh, and start all over again in the 2026 timeframe with another push. Well, Stephen, for for Friday evening, you did very well there. I mean, you you were you were very eloquent in uh, in explaining what exactly it is. So I, I will jump to another question because some people have said, you know, what exactly is the framework behind the data strategy? Um, so I'm wondering if you could connect um, the mission to that broader framework, and and how this supports the implementation of the data strategy. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, the missions are really connected to the overall strategy through uh, the framework. And I, don't, I think we might have a graphic. I'm not sure if it's up on screen for you guys, but there's sort of a, a like a flower petal graphic that lays out the principles and then some of the underlying pieces uh, around that. Um, if we don't have it, it is available and you can certainly find it in the strategy itself. But the guiding principles here um, uh, are uh, to have purposeful, client-centric, trusted, ethical, open, uh, and enabling uh, government data and information that will help produce the desired outcomes of effective, equitable, ethical, uh, and inclusive services, programs, and policy. We want to make sure that government is trusted and accountable, um, and that we deliver greater, we deliver and derive uh, greater public value from data, uh, from evidence-informed decision-making, and in particular, one of the things we added in um, to, uh, to the data strategy in this last refresh was support for Indigenous data sovereignty, where we saw the work that was coming under the, um, the UN Declaration for the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act that was passed in Parliament, uh, and the efforts that were being made by Indigenous Services Canada to drive Indigenous data sovereignty, and agreed between the three uh, sort of principal pens on this paper, which was Treasury Board, the Privy Council Office and uh, Statistics Canada to sort of put our collective shoulders behind Indigenous Services Canada to make sure that all departments and agencies were delivering that mandate from an Indigenous data sovereignty standpoint. So the goal of that combination of the mission areas and the specific deliverables and these these principles and, and, and sort of broad um, value statements that we've put in there is to entrench data as an asset so that it's fully integrated into how we're delivering outcomes to Canadians. Um, and that we actually value it like any other public asset. We actually take a look at you know, when it's useful, we get rid of it when it's not, we uh, manage it uh, through its life cycle in a way that we have not previously done. Uh, so that was what we tried to knit together in terms of that overall framework into something that will actually um, uh, be put into place and enable uh, the culture, communications, and change management will need to actually push that through. I, I really like how the, the data strategy encompasses not just the infrastructure and foundational pieces, but the culture that, that would drive us forward, you know, in terms of making sure that um, this is successful, because as as they say, culture eats strategy for for breakfast. So so I I, I really like how you uh, you communicated that, Stephen. Um, before we go any further, I'm wondering if there are any questions from the audience. Um, we just wanted to pause a bit to see if we could engage the audience if they have any questions. Do I, I don't see anything in the room? Okay, I see somebody walking up to the mic. Um, I've spent the last couple of days listening to the city of Edmonton tell us how they are the most open city in North America, the world might be. Uh, the city of Calgary telling us how, uh, how important it is to make data available to their citizens. The city of Vancouver walk us through their open data framework. Uh, city of Montreal, same thing. And a lot of talk from the government of BC about how they're making data accessible to their citizens. 
Uh, does the Canadian government's data strategy include making all of that siloed data available in a single source and accessible to all Canadians? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think the short answer is that the uh, I mean, the short answer and a bit disheartening is 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 no, uh, in the sense that we uh, the, the it is a data strategy for the federal public service and the primary focus is on knitting together departments and agencies in that federal family. However, um, I think the the reality of the system uh, that we live in is that Canadians don't care uh, what level of government it is that they have. Uh, that they are accessing to get things done. And there are huge interdependencies, right? When we look at, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the organization that, that EMA works for, when we look at uh, many of the other efforts we have at the federal level, uh, we have to do these things in partnership with provinces and municipalities in order to deliver the overall effect for, for, for Canadians and other members of the public. And Beyond that, there's tons of good data we could be using and sharing with each other in order to deliver those services and making them better. We do, we've been working with the, um, uh, the Joint Councils through the Institute for Citizen-Centered Services uh, and having discussions, particularly this last few months around uh, artificial intelligence and how we come together on those things. I've had opportunities to talk to uh, colleagues in, uh, across all the provinces and, and territories on uh, particularly again on, on generative AI as we've sort of elaborated where we want to go on some of those issues and the uh, the ethical and uh, uh, other challenges that they uh, that they embody. Uh, so the intent is to move in that direction. The data strategy itself, I think, is not the major issue there. The data strategy is more about getting the federal family organized. Uh, but ultimately, there is uh, there is a need to move beyond that into something that is puts the citizen first and gets at sort of the overall user experience, particularly on the services side, uh, where it is, uh, we will all be well served by better integration across the different levels of government. So the aspiration is yes, um, the data strategy is probably not the, the vehicle, but we will absolutely be moving into that space, particularly in the services area. Ima, I don't know if you have anything you wanted to say on that, because you are at the heart on some of those Yes, pieces. I mean, I, I would add that um, Steve, you made a good point, and, and we, we're working with organizations like Statistics Canada to really make data more available, not only to um, public servants, but to the public and academics. So if you look at special arrangements, we have through the things like the FRDC, where we make a lot of data uh, public, we integrate data with Statistics Canada, and if you go on the website, you'll see public data on things like employment insurance. Um, so we're pushing towards that. And to Stephen's point, you know, we have a lot of uh, privacy considerations that we need to really take into account. So at Employment and Social Development Canada, we do publish quite a bit of data on the open government portal. But um, privacy, the privacy acts limits us in the in the ability to really go into granular details on some of this data, but where we are pushing towards that. Of course, privacy is an essential value we have. Uh, <laughs> this stuff. But yes, I take Ema's point. The Privacy Act is 40 years old, right? And um, we've been talking, we've been talking between ourselves and we've been talking with our teams about the fact that data sharing is the next big thing uh, mm -hmm. where we are going to have to look at, I think the full suite of policy and legislation uh, to make sure that it is fit for purpose with regard to data sharing, uh, including having all the right, you know, security by design, privacy by design elements, but all of that necessary to make sure that we can have the right level of openness uh, and transparency and sharing uh, enabled by that, those security and privacy uh, principles. Just looking at any other questions. Oh, I see there's another question in the room. Thank you. As you uh, undertake to inventory all of the data that exists within the federal government, which I'm sure is no uh, small undertaking, I'm wondering whether or not what your opinions might be on publishing all of the metadata for those data sets that you hold so that Canadians would know what the federal government holds and what they might want to encourage you to publish. Yeah, that's a great question too. Uh, so I would say like, one of the things we are doing right now um, has been pushing forward uh, a number of uh, standards and policy refreshes around standards um, uh, so that we have, at least on a go forward basis, 
things departments and agencies can um, hinge their work on. Uh, and the major piece that is coming through very shortly is an update to the uh, standard on metadata, which has been uh, had been a few years old. So that'll reset the foundation across um, departmental uh, data holdings on what kind of metadata we expect to see and how departments should be um, putting that in place so that we do have it more accessible. I'm quite open to the idea that uh, we would... Uh, I mean, the standard itself will be available, but that we would start to push more open data sets out through the open government portal where uh, where we can, so that we can make it visible. That's certainly been something we've been trying to do all the way through. Um, up till now, we should have better visibility into those holdings uh, as the years uh, continue to go by here. So in principle, yeah, I've got no issue with, uh, with that. Uh, that openness element is um, underpins a lot of what we do uh, from a from a policy center standpoint here, uh, whether that's data sets themselves, the metadata in them, or um, in the case of some of the AI work, uh, the algorithmic impact assessments and things like that that we do uh, push through the uh, the open government uh, the open data portal, sorry the open data section of the open government portal. <laughs> And I'll just add that we're also dealing with a lot of legacy systems. So um, I think the opportunities with things like transformation and digital transformation, we will relook how you know we do some of these things by design to the the, the point you raised, Stephen, about the um, you know the the data by design as opposed to reacting and fixing things as we go. So I think a lot of those considerations will will come into play as we look at transformation and um, how we can standardize and make things more interoperable as we, um, as we build new systems and, and new ways of, of working within the public service. Yeah, I'm actually, it's interesting. I'm going to a, a, a session next week in Cambridge, Ontario with a bunch of uh, mostly lawyers, um, mm -hmm. uh, Toronto-based lawyers who talk about data ethics and governance with, uh, with some co a colleague from SATSCAN, actually, Eric Roncoul. Um, they have lots of interest in exactly as the question was asking what it is that we're publishing, the data sets that the government puts out there and how private sector is picking those up and turning them into valuable products in a lot of cases uh, in sometimes in unforeseen ways. I'm quite interested to uh, ask them questions, particularly from a legal perspective, because many of them are representing big firms, what we can get out of the private sector in this space, because I think there is a reciprocal element to this in terms of what we want to not just provinces, municipalities, and others to do, which I think most public sector uh, folks are thinking down this path already, but where are things that the private sector can actually make available for all of us as well, and where they have valuable data sets that, uh, that could be built on by others. I'm looking at any other questions? Oh, I see. <laughs> see, Wilfried are running. Yeah, Wilfried is running. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ian Gillis from the City of Edmonton. Slightly different question. Part of my role involves doing outreach and data literacy development um, to students, like grade five, grade six, through a program we have at the City of Edmonton called City Hall School. What one message for that audience uh, based on this work for this data strategy over the next three years can I take away to deliver to them? <laughs> Wow. Um, I love the question. I just have to think of a good answer. Uh, look, I think what I would say is that um, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, services, uh, we are very keen to get to a place where um, Canadians, other members of the public, the, the government of Canada serves, uh, can get the information they need, one-stop shop, um, you know, no wrong door, all that kind of stuff, are able to get what they need from whatever level of government uh, through whatever approach makes the most sense to them. Uh, we got a long ways to go on that, but it would be interesting to know for me, that I, I guess it's more a question I would love to hear from, from kids on, what... Uh, what they're worried about in this space, or do they think about it at all? Like I, I always question. I've, uh, I've teenagers, but uh, I'm always interested in engaging them in conversations around where are their concerns uh, in terms of of data and 
um, their personal lives? Like how much do they value their privacy? How much do they uh, put online? How much do they worry about um, uh, things being available for uh, forever in this space? So I'm interested to know, for, uh, to get reactions from children in terms of what they think about the value of their information and and what uh how they how they deal with it so i don't know i don't know for grade five and six i guess this is uh i, f I feel like i'm i may be pitching this uh at uh, a too high a level based on my own uh, ages of my own kids uh but just how they how they get their information and how they think about information about them being available to others i would be really interested to have a conversation with them around what they uh what their perceptions are on on those kinds of things. That's uh, that's interesting, Stephen. For for me, I think um, because my son is a bit older, he's in his twenties, and I I kind of saw the evolution. You know, when he was in from kindergarten to him graduating university, and the changes that have happened in the data digital uh, domain, uh, especially now with the rise of ChatGPT and you know, large language models. I, I think it's a huge opportunity when you can speak to grade fives and six, sixes and, and really hone in that message of critical thinking, like the importance of critical thinking. Um, also the importance of questioning, you know, never stop questioning. Um, because now with all these tools at their fingertips, you know, people can go, go into chat GPT and ask a question. Um, it's it's a bit more difficult to really encourage some of those you know core skills that will make people become more data literate like you know interrogating data when you see it not accepting information at face value so when you talk of data literacy i would really push that you know that value of asking questions you know not be not accepting information um, that just comes out of a system um, really questioning it and, and asking where it came from before you accept it. Because I, I have a nephew who, who, as soon as he turns on his phone, um, you'll see things pop up uh, from YouTube and from all kinds of information uh, on social media, which is quite disturbing in some cases. So I think the opportunity to question the information more and not just um, as absorb whatever you see is extremely important for that, for that age group now than ever. Well, Frida, I see you. I see you going to another. <laughs> uh, we're just about out of time, but we have time for one more question. Um, yeah, I just have one comment and and one question. I'm my name is Jeff Paul. I'm with with StatCan. And to the I guess was for the to the first question or about uh, whether or not there's going to be an attempt to include uh, data from the like, municipal governments and, and that sort of thing. Statistics Canada has a number of uh, projects that we are working on to try to do um, uh, work with uh, provinces and territories and, and sometimes municipalities. I'm working on one of those uh, right now where we're trying to bring together internal trade data so everything that provinces have can all be co-located with what the uh, uh, federal government has, uh, not just StatCan but other federal government departments. Which sort of leads to my question, which is that one of the uh, difficulties that, that I'm facing as a way down the line uh, program manager when I'm dealing with other federal government departments is the incredible diversity in the way that people uh, keep, retain, and organize their data, which makes it uh, extremely difficult to bring it in and then make it work with other sets of data that maybe StatCan or Government of BC or whomever is working with. So I'm wondering if there's any thought in the, in the plan over the next three years to start to tackle with you know uh, various government departments across Ottawa about how we can standardize yeah. data how we can have some coherence to yes the metadata but even just the way that we use things so that stat Canada and others who want to do aggregation who want to do cross uh, uh, cross database analysis can have something that's uh, uh, more straightforward to uh, work with than we have right now is there any thought to that yeah no I, look I think this is one of the fundamental questions we have across society, not just in government, but beyond. Uh, I'm actually looking at an email on my other screen here from the uh, Standard, um, Standards Council of Canada, uh, where I'm on the, uh, the steering committee for the Artificial Intelligence and Data Governance uh, Standardization Collaborative. 
uh, which is having its second meeting next week. Uh, like this, the, to me, this is one of the key pieces of work that uh, that needs to be done here with a group like this that can speak not just uh, inside uh, one level of government, but beyond and make sure that we have the right pieces put in place uh, across public and private sector uh, so that we can do exactly what it is that you're, uh, that you're talking about. We are moving at the federal government level to make sure that we standardize like some of the specific elements of what we do across departments and agencies, uh, but it's got to go much wider than that uh, in terms of how we actually put this in. I, I feel compared to where we were 50, uh, certainly 15 years ago, but even five years ago, uh, pre-pandemic, that we are in much better place from a tools and technology standpoint. Uh, but it would be nice to do this in a way that uh, doesn't just enrich uh, Microsoft through their 365 suite. Not that I'm against Microsoft at, at all. I, they're, they're a huge, great partner to us. But uh, we need to do something in a way that is tech agnostic and allows us to, uh, to move from one vendor to another. And I think we're only going to get that through organizations like the Standards Council of Canada. And I would add to that by saying that we've we've actually done some work with Statistics Canada to standardize addresses, because as you know, addresses are collected in so many different forms, province, name it. So we've done a lot of work there, like just doing that standardization. And from that experience, it really showed the value, the value of having a data strategy and the value of having that chief data officer role in the different organizations, because it kind of unifies, you know, it unifies people towards that vision that Stephen uh, talked about, you know, that framework of having consistency across government. So I think one of the first steps is really just getting people's houses in order in the different departments by saying that, you know, this is something we need to do and we work on doing it. And, and there's been some success in the work we've done with StatScan on that. But like Steven said, it's uh, it's a lot of work and it will take it to take time. It, it's a journey. 